Last year's version was excellent. This year's version is ever so slightly better. Welcome back to another Wear Testers performance review. My name is Alan, and today we're taking a look at the LeBron 21 basketball shoes from Nike. The changes are very incremental, and it's not going to be radically better than last year's. But as we all know, incremental changes can have a compounding effect in terms of performance, and that is why I like this better. The LeBron 21s now feature this leather upper material that is a contrast to the knit material that we had in last year's model. Last year's model was excellent in terms of lockdown and foot containment, but this leather upper material just adds a tiny bit extra rigidity and it feels just more substantial. You do lose out on some breathability with the shoe as well as maybe a tiny bit of weight, but overall I like the feeling of the leather in terms of foot containment. When I was constantly stopping and changing movements, it really felt like it was cupping my feet really well and it felt comfortable while it did so. Now, there are perforations here on this side as well on this side, but I think most of the breathability will really come from this tongue right here, which we'll talk about later. This type of upper material is also refreshing to see nowadays because most of the performance shoes that we get today are geared towards being as light as possible and having zero break in time. So that usually means we get very thin uppers that can sometimes feel very cheap and plasticky on foot. This just adds a nice premium feel to the shoe. The technical weight of the shoe is heavier compared to last year's model, but I really don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Even though the upper is thicker than last year's model, it never felt like it dragged me down. It still feels pretty minimal and light on foot overall. There aren't any additional layers or paneling on top of it. There aren't any plastic pieces. So there are less factors for your feet to rub against other pieces that would otherwise cause discomfort. Underneath this leather upper material is actually still textile material. So underneath this is a base layer. You could actually see a peak of it through this swoosh right here. This textile material, that is what's inside. And on top of that are these cables that they call 360 degree zonal cables. You'll see the outlines of the lines here on this side as well as on the other side. And then to finish it all off, you have this leather exterior that we see on top of the shoe. I've seen pictures of other future colorways that do not feature this leather type of material. They have a glossy finish their uppers, but nonetheless, I still think that they will feel more substantial compared to the knit upper from last year. The laces now are thicker and they are rounded. In his initial video, Chris brought up the potential problem that these type of laces may have. Thick laces usually loosen up much easier, and he was correct. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. When I first played with these shoes, I kind of lazily just tied my shoes. I, I don't think I double knotted to, and it easily just loosened up. So with these type of laces, you have to double knot. But the funny thing is when I did double knot these shoes, the lace length was too short. I just had the exact amount. That's fine for most people, but I think for people who have wide feet or people who wear ankle braces, this can be a potential problem because those type of people usually need more lace length. I myself like to wear ankle braces sometimes. And when I did wear my ankle braces, I needed more or lace length. If you run across that problem, the only solution I can offer is that you have to skip one of the eyelets and the eyelet that I skipped is the second to the last one. Having this really thick and even more substantial lace lock is very fitting for the shoe just because the laces are thicker. And Nike Sphere is this cushioning system around the ankle and heel area. They first introduced this in the Air Zoom generation and they reintroduced it in last year's model. I'm really happy that they brought it back in the 21s just because it's just really comfortable. It's nice and soft to the touch. What's different for the Nike Sphere is that it has these little cutouts. And the idea in here is that the more that you play with this shoe, the more moisture and heat will be applied. And then the more that cushion will eventually mold to your feet. But my favorite feature of it is that it's thick and it is very comfortable on my feet. If you get the right size, the Nike Sphere cushion here as well as the tongue should really lock in your ankle. The tongue can really make or break the fit of a shoe. It's a very underrated part, but it's such a large part of the shoe that covers the top of your foot. This tongue is really the exact same tongue of the LeBron NXT. I really liked the tongue on the NXT version last year more than the LeBron 20s, just because it was more bendable. If the tongue is more bendable and if it is wide enough, it really just hugs the ankle much better. The LeBron 20 tongue was not so bad, but it felt 
felt more rigid up top. It was flatter than what I would have liked it to be. I just wanted it to just be a little bit more malleable so it could fit around my ankle. Thankfully, I didn't really experience any sort of heel slippage in last year's model. Some people did. A really nice tongue could have helped as well, but it's really a combination of the tongue and the heel and ankle cushion that will really give you a nice hugging feel as long as you get the right size. The heel counter in last year's model was already pretty solid, but it wasn't listed on the text sheet whether it had a heel clip. What did have a heel clip is the NXT version. The heel clip in the 21s is even beefier and it does cover a larger area in the heel part. That is always welcome and that should help you out in terms of heel lockdown. When your foot is inside the shoe, these act as uh, tiny sidewalls. Uh, they're not that high, but just being there helps. They work with the leather upper to help contain your foot in the footbed. As for the torsional support of the shoe, the LeBron 21 now features a plastic rectangular piece instead of a beefier carbon fiber shank plate. It does have a little bit more forefoot flex compared to last year's model, but in terms of rigidity in the middle, it's still also pretty hard to bend. The TPU shank plate is there more for rigidity rather than being more of a propulsion type of plate. Last year's model had a carbon fiber shank plate and that one was really hard to bend even in the forefoot area. So this is one of the bigger differences between this shoe and last year's model. Do you want something that has more flex or do you want something that is just rigid throughout and that's gonna depend on your foot type and preference. I usually like shoes that have more forefoot flex. It allows me to use uh, less part of the outsole, namely the forefoot, and that allows me to touch off of the ground much easier. If I were playing with a shoe that was torsionally rigid throughout, it forces me to use more of the shoe since I can't flex it as much, so my reaction time would be fractionally slower. Just having that TPU shank plate I think is just enough for the shoe to not overfold when you're playing with it. The cushion of the shoe is the best part about it. Landings were really nice and it felt good in terms of impact protection. Uh, I never felt like my feet hurt at any point when I was playing, so that's always good. When you have that type of cushion and really good traction, uh, that just makes playing really, really fun. Cushion construction is similar to last year's model. What's only really different is the midsole carrier foam. Last year had Kushlon and this year you have Kushlon 2.0. From a first try on perspective, it does feel stiffer. After playing more and more with it, it felt broken in and a bit softer and bouncier as well. When I played with last year's model, the cushion in that shoe eventually felt really good, but there was a painful breaking period for myself. With this year's model, I didn't feel any sort of pain or whatsoever, so I would attribute that to the less aggressive TPU shank plate, like I said earlier. Maybe the Cushlon 2.0 foam also help in that regard. I would say that the forefoot part of the LeBron 21s is slightly closer to the ground, but again, really not by much. There is a six millimeter zoom bag up front. What's notable about being a broad and articulated zoom bag is that it feels more seamless. When you have a zoom bag that is small and doesn't have folds on it, it will feel more noticeable. What I like about the zoom bag here is that it is bouncy, but it doesn't poke my feet or anything like that. I would imagine that that's what most people want too. You don't want it to be reminding you that there's tech here or tech here. In the heel part of the shoe, you have a zoom bag too that is stock fitted into the Kushlon foam. When your foot lands in the heel part of the shoe, you will hit the Kushlon part first before the zoom bag. So that sort of dissipates the force that you put into it and it gives you greater impact protection. Some people had problems with the heel stability last year. In this year's model, the Kushlon 2.0 foam is stiffer. Hopefully the heel cushion part here will give you enough stiffness so that you won't feel any sort of instability there. You have a little bit of an outrigger that jets out a bit and it's not very pronounced, but it's good that it's there, just like last year's model. Traction performance for me was excellent. This particular colorway has this translucent outsole. It worked really well. I played with it in a clean court and a dirty court, even played with it briefly outdoors and it gripped pretty well. Traction pattern is pretty much identical to last year's model. It's just a different storytelling touch to it. This one is a call out to the oyster slash clamshell theme of the shoe. There are going to be future colorways that have solid outsoles. You have the outsole extending on 
the medial side, which I'm always a fan of. Like most performance basketball shoes nowadays, this is best for indoors, but not everyone plays indoors. So at least the traction pattern is consistent all throughout and it should fray out evenly. What size should you get? So for context, my foot profile is that my right foot is wider than my left foot. That's why I went up half a size from my true size. I also like to wear ankle braces every now and then. So if you are a wide footer or you wear ankle braces just like I do, I would recommend you going up at least half a size. If you want a one-to-one -one fit, go true to size. It will give you a snug fit in the midfoot and your toes will uh, almost touch the uh, top part of the shoe. The toe box was pretty comfortable for me. I didn't feel like it was too narrow, but the midfoot area does feel more narrow compared to last year's model. But I would also attribute that to the upper material of the shoe. This upper is leather compared to the knit upper from last year. So it will break in, but it won't break in as much as last year's model. If you played in last year's model and that size worked out well for you, just go with the same size with this model. That is about it for my performance review of the LeBron 21 basketball shoes. These really enhance what was really good with the LeBron 20s and the NXT versions from last year. This will be a favorite among a lot of people with different play styles. As always, hopefully you'll wear your shoes out there, play basketball, have fun. My name is Alan and I'll see you again on the next performance review. Peace.